What's going on YouTube? It has been a minute. Turns out my summer was way busier than I thought it was going to be. I haven't had a lot of time to sit down and share my thoughts on any movies. I've been definitely watching some movies, but like I said, every time I think I'm going to sit down and record a video, I got something else to do. But I'm here today and I actually have a two for one for you all. So um, yesterday my wife and I watched two movies back to back. We spent about six hours at the movie theater. Um, and so instead of just reviewing each movie separately, which I was originally going to do, I decided that ultimately I didn't really have the time or the energy to record, uh, edit, and then upload two separate videos. So I'm just going to do like a double feature review uh, for this video, just like we watched these movies back to back yesterday. And so without further ado, let's get into the reviews. The first movie that we watched yesterday was Oppenheimer. Christopher Nolan is probably my favorite director, not only of like the directors that are currently working, but probably of all time. And I know that's not like a hot take. I know that's not like a niche director to pick. A lot of people uh, probably feel the same way. But, you know, for me, ever since I saw Inception about what 14 years ago now, um, all of his movies have really been uh high on my like all of his movies I really like um, anytime that he's announced a movie that's going to come out it always becomes like top most anticipated for me and so obviously this one I, I was really excited about this one I knew was going to be maybe a little bit different in terms of story from the rest of his movies you know uh, most of his movies he comes up with the uh, the story on his own it's original IP um, and then he writes it and then and then directs it this movie is obviously based on the true story of Robert Oppenheimer and so so I knew going into it that there wouldn't be like maybe the typical Christopher Nolan kind of like storytelling. There are elements um, of his forms of storytelling that are present in this, which I'll talk about in a second. But just from a filmmaking standpoint, this movie is awesome. Um, Christopher Nolan has reportedly said that there are zero CGI uh, shots in this movie. There are zero visual effects, which when you watch this movie, um, and, and if that is true, then it really you know boggles my mind how they're able to film some of these scenes. Like there are some scenes where you see what's going on in Oppenheimer's mind, where he's like visualizing different quantum events and um, just what you see on screen, I, I can't even imagine how they filmed that practically. And then, you know, the Trinity test, the actual bomb going off. Obviously, they couldn't film an actual atomic bomb, but um, how they're able to do that with like practical effects, it really just it's his filmmaking at its best not a lot of people are able to make movies like he does so from a from a filmmaking standpoint um this is typical christopher nolan you know it's directed well um the cinematography is great and um the effects uh being practical in camera are are awesome it's an amazing movie to look at and from an acting standpoint things are are just as uh, on a high level uh killian murphy who's been in a lot of christopher nolan movies um Although never as the lead, he's amazing. Most people will only know him from Christopher Nolan movies. If you're like an American going uh, audience member, you probably will have only known him from these movies. But um, if you've ever watched Peaky Blinders, the BBC show, he is the lead actor on that show. So um, there are people who will know that he's capable of leading a project. Um, and so this came as no surprise. Like he's, he's amazing in this film. He's so consistent. I wouldn't say that there's like one or two scenes where it's like oh that's his like that's the scene that's going to win him an oscar he's just so consistent and has such a good screen presence throughout the whole movie i won't be surprised if he gets nominated and even if he wins for um for for best actor but he's awesome and then just across the board the performances are great robert downey jr is amazing uh emily blunt matt damon all perfectly cast and then there are a bunch of like r random people that show up that uh only show up for like one or two scenes and you're like wow they really got a big name actor for like this five minute scene but everyone really nails their role all the acting is fantastic in this movie if there's any downside to this film which wasn't for me because i didn't really feel the effects of it it is a three hour long movie and the vast majority of it is just like people talking there's not a lot of what we would call action it's just um dialogue but for me i really didn't even notice it like this movie flew by it didn't feel like it was just people talking it felt like stuff was happening there's actually one point where my wife turned to me and she had to go to the bathroom but she wanted to know how long like we'd been watching to see how much was left and i normally wouldn't do this because i'm a respectful um audience member i did take out my phone real quick to check the time and it had been almost two hours since the since the movie had been going on and it 
it, it did not feel like that at all. Those two hours had just flown by. So, again, this movie, for some people, if you are maybe a little bit impatient, um, if you have maybe, like, attention uh, issues, if you can't sit down and just watch people talk for, for a long time, this may not be the movie for you because that's pretty much what it is. But for me and for my wife, who I actually didn't think would uh, appreciate that, I thought she would definitely be a little bit restless. Um for neither of us was that an issue. So again, it is kind of long, but for me it flew by, but I can definitely see why for some people that will be an issue. Overall though, Oppenheimer, an amazing film. A lot of people are saying it's Christopher Nolan's best. I personally don't think so. Not that this left me like wanting any more, but this movie was perfectly executed. Um, you know, only good things to say. Uh, I'm not gonna be surprised if this movie makes my end of the year top 10 list. All right, so after my wife and I saw Oppenheimer, we had about a 45-minute break, and then the next film that we saw was Barbie. And I don't think I need to say this, but I will anyways. Barbie is a pretty different movie to Oppenheimer. This one is visually different um, from a storytelling perspective it is different and so i will say i enjoyed this film my wife did not enjoy it as much she actually liked oppenheimer more which which surprised me and so the positives of this film it is very well directed it is very well shot the cinematography is uh very unique so you have the um the, the, pretty much two sets going on here you have barbie land and the real world the real, real world scenes are just it's Los Angeles so if you've seen any movies with LA you know what to expect but the way that they filmed the Barbie Lane scenes it is very unique it's not anything I've ever seen before um, and so I really thought that that made this movie stand out from that standpoint this movie also had some really good performances. Margot Robbie as um, stereotypical Barbie was awesome as the main character. Ryan Gosling as Ken were the two standouts. But everyone else in the film really had a, a part to play. And I wouldn't say that there were any uh, anyone left out. This movie also had a lot of pretty big name actors and actresses that um, were just kind of cast in like small roles. But every, every one of those uh, individuals did have an important role in the movie. So across the board, I thought the acting was was pretty good. With this movie skewing more towards the comedy genre, I will say that there wasn't like one or two scenes that was like the standout funny moment of the movie, but instead this movie had consistent like small to kind of big like laughs like it made me chuckle i was chuckling throughout the whole movie there wasn't like any joke though that i would say stood out as being the funniest or um you know the most out there but i was consistently laughing throughout the movie which for me i appreciate um i would rather have a movie make me laugh consistently throughout than just like a comedy that's got like only one or two funny scenes so i did appreciate that about this film I think the thing that stood out to me most about Barbie, though, was how self-aware it was and how meta it is, which I kind of knew going in after reading some early reviews, but this movie is very much a movie to commentate and criticize the modern world. Like, it's they make no effort to hide what the point of this movie is. The themes and the messages are thrown at you non-stop like this is a movie that is um uh is very feminist which is no problem like i i appreciate that but it it just throws that theme at you throughout the whole movie it is very much like um here is what's wrong with the real world uh here is how we're gonna like make fun of what's going on in real life so i real i like that they tried to make it that Sometimes it was a little bit much for me. Sometimes the meta-ness of this film was, it again, they just kept throwing it at you nonstop. And so there were some times where I thought it was very nuanced and well done, but there were some times where it's like, okay, we get like, you're just going to keep referencing these things that's ha that are happening in the real world. Like we get it. We already know that. Um, I think it was a little bit heavy handed in that aspect, but also you had elements of like, you know, self-realization and self-growth and growing as a person. Again, no secret that that's one of the themes in the movie. I thought that theme was a little bit more, um, not as just in your face as the other themes. So again, I laugh throughout this movie, but sometimes the, the references and the 
uh, meta-ness of the movie became a little bit much for me. Like, there's one one, one line where they reference the, the Zack Snyder cut of the Justice League just because to throw it in there. And I was like, hey, there's no need to get personal. But it just just because, you know? So there's stuff like that that they just put in there. I'm like, okay, well, that's a bit unnecessary. I will also say, even though this is a Barbie movie, and Barbie and Ken have traditionally been dolls for young children... I would not recommend bringing children to this movie. Not because it's inappropriate or anything. I mean, it's PG-13, so there's going to be inappropriate things. But as I was mentioning before, the themes of this movie and the references and the self-awareness of this movie is just going to go right over kids' heads. Like, they'll know... If you were to ask a child after watching this movie, they'll be able to tell you that Margot Robbie is Barbie and Ryan Gosling was Ken. But I don't think they could tell you, like what 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 was the main point of the movie like what were what's the main lesson of the movie i don't think they're going to be able to tell you that um so i would maybe not recommend bringing kids to this movie just because it's not that it's not a kids movie this is not a kids movie this is a movie for adults who are going to be able to understand and get something from it so don't bring kids uh it would be another takeaway for me at the end of the day oppenheimer barbie I enjoyed both movies, both very different, different ends of the spectrum, both very well executed, well directed, well written movies. Um, Oppenheimer, though, I think is just on another level for me with Christopher Nolan. Barbie, I enjoyed. I laughed throughout. I did appreciate the meta humor of it, but sometimes it was a little bit much for me. I would recommend both movies, though. I think uh, both will have a different audience that will get more from either one, but if you go and see both, I think you'll get get something out of viewing both of these movies. Okay, so Oppenheimer and Barbie, have you seen these movies? If so, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching, and be sure to stay tuned for more.